Hello, dear friends. The Tibetan tradition conceals an immense wealth of spiritual knowledge, most of which is almost known in the West. Some may complain that I do not report on their reset, but the news is very repetitive and there is no new evidence. Opinion piece. The clear light of being. Your mind is made of light. Key to a spiritual liberation. Full consciousness is mindfulness. The yoga of clear light is called Osel. It is divine light or whatever you want to call it. It's about catching an original radiance. It's part of the six yogas of Naropa. Let's start. The Tibetan spiritual tradition does not go with half measures like the Western mindfulness when it comes to practicing its disciplines, but does everything in a big way, that is to say, is a beastly way, for the pulsilanimous mentality of the West. Mindfulness, also called mindfulness, consists of being consciously and internationally attentive to what we are doing in the present moment, without judgment, attachment or rejection of the experience in any way. Mindfulness, also called full awareness, pure awareness, is a spiritual or psychological faculty that is considered of great importance on the path of enlightenment. Hermit monks in Tibet usually spend a minimum of three years holed up in accessible caves over ravines with a minimum of food and water and often survive without a fire at minus 20 degrees Celsius with the help of ascetic, mystical and esoteric practices. When this type of hermit monk returns to his monastery, he has to demonstrate that he has obtained spiritual realizations by remaining immobile for a week in a meditation posture, without eating or drinking or going to the bathroom, watched by two monks during the day and two other monks at night to certify that he has not moved a millimeter, according to the Spanish lama Iñaki Preciado Idoeta, who is a doctor of philosophy, translator, Tibetologist and pioneer of modern Spanish Sinology. He specializes in Buddhism, Taoism and Tibetology. In, in his early days in Mao Zedong's China, he worked as a Chinese translator and expert at the Spanish Embassy in Beijing. On his return to Spain, he translated classical Taoist text and Chinese literature, as well as poetry. In 1979, he was awaited by the Fray Luis de Leon Translation Prize for his version of the, of the Lao Tse of the Book of Tao, which in my opinion is the best Taoist translation from China ever made in Spanish. In 1983, he approached the study of the Tibetan language and culture, a country he was, he was, or he has extensively traveled throughout the last decade, publishing several books about it. Until 2012, he resided in a remote Bompo monastery in eastern Tibet, when he was forced to leave the country under pressure from the Chinese authorities. His, his works are summarized in more than 20 translations, essays and travel books, of which Lie Thys, The Book of Perfection, Emptiness, The Four Books of the Yellow Emperor, and The Life of the Great Yogi Milarepa of Tibet, stand out to me. Definition Your mind is made of light. We call it the Dharmakaya, the clear light of reality. The transcendental eternal light is everywhere. It is the light of God or whatever you want to call it. The Buddhist understanding is that mind has no particular quality or attribute of its own. It is clear, clear light. The clear light of self is the radiance that it was perceived during the intermediate state of battle between life and death, which goes unnoticed by most human beings who experienced it but which would be the key to the liberation of the human soul 
from the illusion of the matrix and the endless cycle of reincarnations that makes us suffer so much. This knowledge exists in all the spiritual traditions of humankind with different names, including Christianity. But the tradition that has formulated it with greater clarity is the Tibetan. Since its practice is part of one of the six yogas of Naropa, indeed, if one exercises in life through meditation to identity, perceive a mesh with the clear light of self, one will be prepared to be liberated when the supreme moment of the passage to the intermediate state between life and death, called bardo, arrives. The luminous mind is a term that appears in various Buddhist texts. It is variously translated as a mind that shines brightly, or mind of clear light, while the related terms luminosity is also translated as clear light in Tibetan Buddhist context of purity in East Asian contexts. The Book of the Dead The Bardo Todol, in English, the liberation by hearing during the intermediate state, better known as the Tibetan Book of the Great Liberation, is a guide of instructions for the dying, which speaks of the clear light of the self and which allows reaching enlightenment during the period immediately after death and for some days more, in order to avoid being reborn and entering samsara again, since it is considered that death lasts 49 days and after that a rebirth, a rebirth in the cycle of reincarnation takes place. Thus, the text gives some recommendations to keep in mind during this intermediate period known under the Tibetan name of Bardo. The text describes experiences that the consciousness has after death in the Bardo, the interval between death and the next rebirth, and aims to guide you through them. The text also includes chapters of, on the sign of death and the rituals to perform when it is approaching or has occurred. The text can be used as an advanced practice for trained meditators or to support the initi initiated during the experience of death. Radiant Yoga Brightness, radiance or clear light refers to the clear and radiant nature of the mind, which is, which is associated with Buddha nature. It is said to be experienced during various events in one's life, such as orgasm, sleep, dreams, and in the process of dying and being reborn. Tilopa's oral instructions explain the, this practice of radiant yoga as follows. The yogi, working with the central channel, places the mind in the central channel and fixes concentration on the heart drop. Visions arise such as lights, rays of light, rainbows, sunlight and moonlight at dawn, the sun, the moon and then appearances of deities and forms. In this way, myriads of wells are purified. Six, six practices. The most direct practice of this discipline is part of, of one of the six yogas of Naropa called Osel in Tibetan which is the yoga of clear light, radiance, or luminosity. By the attainment of this stage of purification in this life, one can learn to recognize the clear light, which usually appears in various forms during the battle process of death. The cultivation of this practice consists of recognizing, visualizing, and being able to celebrate the vision of the innate light in its different aspects. Non-practitioners perceive only a glow of the white light at the moment of death. Another of the six yogas is Tummo, or the art of generating internal mystical heat so that the hermit can withstand temperatures of 20 degrees below zero in his cave without the need of, for fire or heating. Tumo is related to the description of the sensation of intense heat in the body as an effect of the circulation of prana through the chakras. It consists of generating with visualization. In, in such a case, it is usual to imagine 
a luminous and warm sphere inside the body. The imagined sphere as constituted by the prana that is aspirated and to know how to distribute it by means of precise techniques based on the exercise of breathing, relaxation and concentration of attention on certain parts of the body. Through the inner warmth, the vital winds are made to enter the central channel. This powerful experience of bliss resembles the actual bliss experienced in a spiritual awakening. The bliss experienced in this practice is a hundred times more intense than ordinary sexual orgasm and gives rise to a special state of consciousness. This static state of mind is then used to contemplate emptiness. Another practice is Milam or dream state yoga called Nidra Yoga. In order to make the time we spend dreaming more meaningful, we must first recognize that we are dreaming. The next step is the transformation of the so-called dream. The third is known as multiplication. There is a correspondence between the dream states and the experience of death. First, the yogi must see all perceptions and thoughts as a dream during the day. Then he should go to sleep lying on his right side with a strong determination to recognize that he is dreaming within the dream. Fourth, the yoga of the illusory body is called Gyulu. It is the second stage of transformation. A highly refined mental body is created through the union of subtle prana and subtle mind within the organism. This Gyulu provides a suitable basis for the manifestation of the light body and can therefore be created in life through practice. Fifth, the yoga of the intermediate state is called Bado. By transcending worldly things and discriminations, one is said to pave the way for the realization of innate wisdom and do away with duality at once. It is a very pure state of mind and mood close to that of the immortals. Sixth, the yoga of the transfer of consciousness to a pure Buddha field is called Powa. This can be to a pure land of energy field of a Buddha or to another living or dead being. It can be translated as transfer of consciousness at the moment of death. This practice is the last of the six yogas of Naropa. Through the practice of Powa, one learns to transfer one's consciousness through the top of the head, directly to a pure realm, thus avoiding some of the typical experiences that occur at the moment after death. Of these six traditional practices, only three are practiced today, Tummo, Powa and Clear Light Yoga. I only practiced Powa based on the Buddha Amitabha, after proper initiation by a Lama but I didn't get the typical little hole that practitioners get in the intracranial fissure. The objective of this practice is to gain the ability to transfer the consciousness through the cranial chakra, which is the door of Brahma at the moment of leaving the body. Mahamudra The central teaching of Naropa is the doctrine of Mahamudra or Great Seal, elucidated by Gampopa in his works. This doctrine focuses on four main stages of meditation practice called the Four Yogas of Mahamudra. First, the development of a simple mind without attachment. Second, the transcendent of all conceptual and dualistic elaboration. Third, the perspective that all phenomena are of an empty nature. Fourth, the possession of the path, which is beyond any act of attainment. It is through these four stages of development that the practitioner is supposed to attain the perfect realization of Mahamudra. Six advices. Tilopa gave Naropa six pieces of advice. First, don't remember, let go of what has already happened. Second, do not imagine, let go of what may come. Third, don't think let go of what is happening now. Fourth, don't examine, 
don't try to interpret it, to interpret anything. Fifth, don't control. Don't try to make something happen. Sixth, uh, rest, relax now and rest. Instructions. Tilopa also gave Naropa five instructions. First, the fool in his in this ignorance knows nothing but battles in the flow of samsara. Second, have compassion for those who suffer constant anxiety. Third, tired of incessant, incessant pain and wishing to it to subside, adhere to a teacher. Fourth, when this blessing touches your heart, the mind is liberated. Fifth, the problem is not enjoyment, the problem is attachment. Five powers. The five powers that lead to enlightenment are first, faith that counterattacks doubt, second, effort that counteracts laziness. Excuse me, first, faith that counteracts doubt, second, effort that counteracts laziness. Third, mindfulness, clarity of mind, decisiveness, which controls wandering. Fourth, concentration that counteracts destruction. Fifth, wisdom that counteracts ignorance. Great perfection. Thokchen is an extremely advanced system of meditation on the deepest and subtlest fundamental levels, levels of mind. Mind refers to the uninterrupted mental activity of cognitively in aging with objects, described from another perspective as the mental activity of giving rise to mental appearances or holograms. Thokchen, great perfection or great completion, also known as Ati Yoga, is a tradition of teachings in Indo-Tibetan Buddhism. It is based on discovering the primordial stage and natural condition of beings, also called the nature of mind. This primordial basis is said to have the qualities of purity, emptiness and spontaneity, spontaneity associated with luminous clarity and compassion. The goal of Thokchen is the knowledge of this base. Thokchen teachings emphasize naturalness, spontaneity and simplicity. And that's all for today. Thanks a lot, dear friends.